Hello everyone, you are welcome to today's class. We are going to pass through Cambridge International AS and LAB Pure Mathematics 1 for May, June 2023, paper 1-2. Question number 1. The equation of a curve is such that dy dx is equal to 4 out of x minus 3, power 3 for x greater than 3. The curve passes through the point four five. Right, so find the equation of the curve. So this is a dy dx. It's a differential equation. It has dy dx. So we have to undo what was differentiated. And to undo differentiation, that is integration. So I can take this one up here, uh, the x minus 3, the power of 3. When I take it up, the power becomes a negative. And when we are integrating, um, ry is going to be the integral of this dy dx. So we shall increase the power by 1 here. So we shall add a 1 on negative 3. Then it becomes a negative 2. Then we shall divide by that new power. So we shall divide it here as a negative 2. But we shall always multiply with the derivative of what is inside here. Because this is a compounded function. So you have to uh, multiply by the derivative of this x minus 3. So suppose you had something like 2x minus 3. So you have to multiply here by a 2, because when you differentiate 2x minus 3, you get a 2. So for this case, we are just having x minus 3. So when you differentiate x, it is a 1. So it is even optional to put this one here, because there is nothing. It is even going to change. And then after that, we put an arbitrary constant, because any constant, when it is differentiated, it gives you 0. So which constant was differentiated and it disappeared? We don't know it, so we need to find it out. But we can only find it uh, if we are given the point through which the curve passes. So they are telling us that the curve passes through the point 4, 5. So now we can substitute in this expression that we have gotten. So negative uh, 4, when you divide by negative 2, you will get a negative 2. And this power negative 2, this one, we can take it down. Okay. So when we take it down, now it becomes x minus 3 to the power of 2. The power becomes a positive when it goes down. And then uh, we can substitute. So our y is 5, put a 5 there, and then our x is a 4. So 4 minus 3, automatically you get a 1. Squared is a 1, so negative 2 over 1, that's a 1. So you can shift this 2 and put it this side, so it becomes a plus. Okay, That means our c is going to be 7. So the equation of that curve is y is equal to negative 2 out of x minus 3 bracket squared plus 7. Next, number 2, they are saying that the coefficient of x power 4 in the expansion x plus 8 to the power of 6 is p, and the coefficient of x squared in the expansion of ax plus 3 power 4 is q. It is given that p plus q is equal to uh, 276. Now, in such questions, you don't need to expand the whole of this x plus uh, a power 6, then you expand and you get all of those 7 terms, then you just pick out the term in x power 4. No. So this is how we do it. You just get that term which is required, term in x power 4. When you look at these two terms, when you are writing them, um, this is how we write them. So you first leave a space, like here, I said term in x power 4. So first leave a small space, then you write this, uh, your two terms that are here. So we are having our x, you write it, and then you also write your a. That's the next term. So if it's a negative, like here we have x minus, if it was like x minus a, so you put the negative there. Then you ask yourself, uh, which power am I going to put onto which powers am I going to put onto these terms such that I end in x squared? So automatically I mean x power 4. Automatically I will put here 4 and then the remaining will be a 2. Because when you add up these two terms, you must get a what? You must get this 6 here. So that's why here. And then the power of this last term, this one which is always on the right here, the this one here. The power which is there is the one that is going to go into the combination. So we put it here, and then our n is a 6. So we have something like that. 6 combination 2, and then x to the power of 4, and then a squared. So like that. That is how you get things first hand. 
and then next uh, six combination two is 15 and then uh, a squared and then x to the power of 4 so p because they said that the coefficient of x to the power of 4 is p that means p is 15 a squared so a coefficient is that uh, term you're going to multiply with the variable so in this case x is the variable the rest are constants so p is equal to 15 a squared and then they also say that the coefficient of x squared in the expansion of ax plus 3 to the power of 4 is q so i have again my two terms here i have ax and then 3 so i first write my ax and then a 3 and then this is power 4 so i asked myself uh, which power am i going to put on ax such that it ends in x squared automatically it has to be a 2 so i will put a 2 here and then uh, i say 4 minus 2 I get a 2 so the 2 then goes on the 3 here and then the power of this 3 is the one that I'm going to put in the combination together with the 4 okay then I use my calculator uh, to say 4 then combination 2 that one gives you 6 then times the 9 which comes from 3 squared so times 9 it gives us 54 then of course here is squared so a has to be squared and then the x squared so that means uh, the coefficient of x squared here is 54a squared. And they said that is q. So q is equal to 54a squared. And then they told us that p plus q is equal to 276. So I just substitute. My p is 15a squared. Then plus q, which is 54a squared. Then I equate to 276. So 15 plus 59, that is 69. Then or I will say 276 divided by that 69, then we get 4. And then that 4, when you take the square root, automatically that one should give you a 2. But whenever you take a square root, we must always put plus or minus. Okay, plus or minus. Because when you get negative 2, you say negative 2 times negative 2, you'll get positive 4. And also 2 times 2 will give you a 4. And even here, they said, find the possible values of the constant a. So for you, if you just put a is equal to 2, then you have left out one answer. Possible values, it means it is more than 1. Okay, so it has to be plus or minus 2. Number 3, x press 4x squared minus 24x plus b in the form a into x plus b squared plus c. So this is what we call the completed square format of a quadratic expression. And they're saying that uh, A and B are integers and C is to be given in terms of the constant uh, P. So in completing squares, we have to first make sure that the coefficient of X squared is 1. So because this is not a, a quadratic equation, it is just an expression. So I first factorize out the coefficient of X squared. So I put a 4 out. And then here I will have x squared. Then, uh, of course, 24 divided by 4, you get a 6. So x squared minus 6x. I can leave out the p just because it doesn't have the x. So I only deal with the ones that are having x. Okay. Then from here, uh, since the coefficient of x squared is 1, now we go to the coefficient of x. We divide it by 2. So when you divide negative 6 by 2, you get a negative 3. Now, I put it together with the x, and then I put a square here. Then, I pop this I pop this 3 out here, and I put it here, then I square it. But here, the sign that must be here has to be a negative always. Okay, it has to always be a minus. And then from there, the rest is simplifying, just simplifying. So what do we do? Uh, 4, now we open the brackets. So 4 times the whole of this, it will be now 4 into x minus 3 squared. And then 4 times 3 squared is 9. So 9 times 4, that is 36. So we have minus 36 plus p. Now the whole of this p minus 36 is our c they are talking about here. That's why they said that c is to be given in terms of p. So the whole of that c is this p minus 36 our a is the 4 and our b is minus 3 
So if this method of completing squares directly is a problem, what you can do, you can just expand this one and then you equate coefficients. So that's another alternative. Like if I expand here x squared plus b, I'll square the x, then 2 times x times b, and then I square the b. Then after I multiply through by a. So inside here we have a squared, then times this a. I mean x squared times the a, you have this. And then 2bx, then times the a. So you have 2abx. And then uh, you square the b, then times the a. That will be ab squared. Then there is this plus c. Now what we do next is to equate coefficients. So when you look at the coefficient of x squared here, it's a 4. And here the coefficient of x squared is a. So you say a is equal to 4. And then uh, the coefficient of x here is negative 24. So I say negative 24 is equal to, then the coefficient of x here is 2ab. But already we have our a as 4. So if I want to get b, I'll get this negative 24 divided by 2a. But my a is a 4. So negative 24 divided by 8, you get a negative 3. See? And then the whole of this is a constant. Okay? The whole of this part is a constant because there is no x on them. So we shall have our p, which is a constant this way now, shall be equal to a b squared plus c. Our a is a 4. Our b is a negative 3. So 4, no, negative 3 squared, that will be a 9. Then times 4, what do you get? You get 36. Then plus c. So what will be our c? So our c is going to be now the p minus 36. So putting it back, these values, uh, a is a 4. Now you can write a is a 4, b is minus 3, and then your c is uh, 36 minus p. Just as what we are having up here. Part b, they are saying hence or otherwise, find a set of values of p for which the equation this has no real roots. Now, for a quadratic equation to have real roots, okay, let's say this one is having uh, the, the coefficient of x is a positive. So for it to have real roots, that means it must cross x-axis. Okay, it can cross it like this two times. That means the b squared minus 4ac is equal to, I mean is greater than zero. Then it can also be like this and then it crosses it once like this like you can have y is equal to let's say x squared and this is x axis see that so this one is a repeated root so it has only one root so that means this one uh, the b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero but again this quadratic equation can fail to meet x axis okay can be above it and now if it is above it let me say this is y axis if it is above it this one has its turning point here okay and uh, the turning point we can always get it from this completed square like for this part here you can just equate this one to zero and you get a three from there so that will be a three and then the y coordinate is the one which you are getting out here which is p minus 36 now, for this turning point to be above the x-axis, that means the y, because this one will be like the y-coordinate. Okay, If it is below x-axis, the y-coordinate is a negative. If it's above x-axis, the y-coordinate has to be a positive. And this is the y-coordinate of the turning point. So, we are saying for real roots, this U-shaped quadratic curve must be above x-axis. This means that the turning point must be also above the x-axis. So our focus is going to be on that turning point because they are talking about the set of values of P, which happens to be the Y coordinate here for the turning point. So I think this only happens when the Y coordinate of the turning point is positive. So the Y coordinate we have gotten here is P minus 36. I just say p minus 36 must be greater than 0. So if it's greater than 0, you'll find that curve always above the x-axis. And taking 36 this way, it means that p will be greater than 36. Number 4. 
solve the equation 8x power 6 plus 215x cubed minus 27. Uh, this is a quadratic in x cubed. If I let maybe my y to be equal to x cubed, just to simplify, you can have y, uh, uh, if, if, if I have y being equal to x cubed, that means y squared is going to be this x cubed, then you square. But again, when you square, these two in indices will multiply with these three, so it will be x to the power of 6. So that means where we're having x power 6, then it will be y what? y squared, and then plus 215 here. 215, x power 3 will be a y, then minus the 27. So do you see that you're having a quadratic equation, but in another unknown which you have put, you see? But after recognizing that this is a quadratic equation in x power 3, you don't even need to put these other variables uh, that you express the x power 3 in terms of another later, but if it pleases you, it's all right. Now, after realizing that, just get your calculator. You don't need to stress. You just put equation, that's 5, and uh, this is a quadratic, which is 3. Then I just put the coefficient, the coefficient, so we have 8, then we have 2, 1, 5, then we have minus 27. Then you press equals. So it will give me 1 over 8. Now, what I will do, uh, I will just write, because it is a quadratic in x what? Cubed. So I will just write my x cubed is equal to uh -huh, 1 over 8. Okay? Now from here, we can get a factor that comes from here because you have to show us how you really solved. And uh, you just use factorization. So you can cross multiply here. When you cross multiply, this one will give you 8 x cubed. You see that? And then it's equal to 1. But bring the 1 back, it will be minus 1. You see? That's the factor. This is the factor you're going to get this answer from. Then next, uh, our calculator had uh, another answer here, which is negative 27. So that means I will have, sorry, my x here uh, cubed, which is equal to 27. So I can bring this one back here, and then I have minus 27. You see that? So that's another factor that I'm getting from here. So now this one, I can team it up with this, and then I write something like this here. All right, the other one was a negative, so it, okay, it was a negative, then you just put a plus here. So I write something like this. So this will be my first step to the question. Okay, then I can continue from here. Um, now, after having those two factors there, so 1 over 8, for me to get uh, x, because this is x cubed, which is equaling to that, then I'll take the cube root of negative 27, and that will be negative 3. And then the cube root of 1 over 8 will give you a half. Um, next is number 5. They're saying that the diagram shows the curve, shows the curve with this equation. y is equal to 10, then x to the power of a half minus 5 over 2, x power 3 over 2 for x greater than 0. The curve meets the x-axis at these points. Find the shaded area. So for the shaded area, we are supposed to integrate, okay? So we integrate area under the curve. So it is from 0 to 4. And then uh, increase the power. We are going to integrate by increasing the power by 1. That will be 3 over 2. Then you divide it, okay? You also increase the power by 1. 1. 1.5 plus 1, that will be 2.5. So I also divide it here. And then uh, I put my limits 4 and 0. And of course, this one will cancel with that. And then um, the 2 will somersault and goes up. Then we get 20 over 3. Then we put the limits. So you can put a 4 wherever there is x. Then after... Uh, we subtract, then we put a zero. So because these are x's, when we put zeros anywhere, it is going to be zero. Then f root of four is a two, two cubed. Two cubed is eight, then eight times 20, that is 160 over three. 
and then root of 4 is 2. So 2 power 5 will be 32. And then putting all of this simplified, 3 times this, that will be 96. So 160 minus 96, you get 64. So it becomes 64. It becomes 64 over 3. Number 6 is about circular measure. We're saying the diagram shows a sector O A B of a circle with center O, angle A O B is equal to theta in radians, and O P is equal to A P, which is equal to X. Show that the arc length A B is two X theta cos theta. Now, because this one is um, this triangle O A B is isosceles, because you can see this is X, this is X, we can divide it into two. Okay, and then we create a right angled triangle. And of course, when we have a right angled triangle, that means we can use Sokatoa or Pythagoras theorem. So that means from O up to here, it will be a half of OA. Okay, it's a half of that. So using Sokatoa, we can say cos of theta is equal to adjacent OA out of hypotenuse because arc length is R theta. So if it is R theta, then we need to get the length, I mean the arc length. And the arc length, uh, I mean, we need to get the radius. So the radius is this OA or OB. So we need to get this OA. But using cosine here, we shall say sine, I mean cos of theta is equal to this a half of A out of the hypotenuse. So this is the adjacent and then this is the hypotenuse. Okay. So cos of theta is equal to a half of OA over x then we can cross multiply that means x cos theta is equal to a half of oa so that means oa is going to be 2x cos theta and then arc length you know that it is supposed to be r theta so our r remember oa oob is the radius of that given arc so we have 2x theta then times the theta here so it becomes 2x theta cos theta which is the one they told us to show. Part B is to find the area of the shaded region APB in terms of x and theta. So as you look at this shaded area, the only way to get that area, we can get uh, area of this whole sector OAB, then we subtract area of this triangle. Now because this whole triangle OAB is not right angled, okay, um, and we don't know this part here, but we can find it. Because this can be the height and this is the whole of OA. But it can be found if we say sine of theta is equal to this opposite out of the hypotenuse. It can be found. But for a triangle which is not right angled, so long as you know one side and then another one and then the angle in between, then we say a half times that known side times the other known side, then sine of the angle in between. So area of sector O A B. Area of sector is a half R squared. You can always check in the in the list of formulae. It's MF19, which they give you in the exams. Area of the sector is a half R squared theta. That means now of course theta has to be in radians. So uh, our R remember is this arc length, I mean uh, is this one here, two x cos theta. So we shall say a half then 2x cos theta, then we square it, then times theta. And then the triangle, remember, we know this part OA, okay? This arc length OA, I mean, this radius here, OA. So that OA is 2x cos theta. So we shall have a half times that 2x cos theta, then times this other side here, x, then sine of the angle in between. So we shall have... Uh, a half x then times 2x cos theta then sine theta and then from there we can have uh, when you square 2 it becomes a 4 so divide by 2 you get 2 so 2x squared then times this theta and then cos squared theta then here the 2 here will cancel with this one and then x will square so x squared cos theta we can you can even leave your answer here or you can pull out what is common like for example here we see x squared common here and here and we can also see a cos theta in here and also in here so if we put 
x squared cos theta out, then inside here we shall have 2 theta cos theta, then minus sine theta. And um, next question, 7, they are saying by expressing cos theta plus sine theta squared, find the three solutions of the uh, of this equation here. So this is trigonometry. So uh, squaring here, we shall square the cosine, that would be cos squared theta. So you can always use these identities that you have A plus B squared. So you square the A, okay? Then you get 2 times A times B. So we shall have 2AB. Of course, if we have a minus in between, like 2 minus B, then here it will be a minus. And then square the B, so it will be this squared. So that's what we are using here. We are going to say um, 2, so you square this cos, that would be cos squared, then plus 2 sine theta cos theta, then plus sine squared theta, then is equal to this one here. In trigonometry, we know that cos squared theta, the Pythagorean identity, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. So that means this way you have 2 sine theta cos theta plus 1, meaning is equal to 1. Of course, when you bring this one this side, it will go. And when it goes, that means you will have 2 sine theta cos theta is equal to 0. And so we shall get this sine theta, we equate to 0. Then arc sine of 0, you get a 0, pi, 2 pi. Hmm? Those horizontal angles, they will give you 0. Their sine will always be 0. So sine of 0 is 0, sine of 180 is 0, sine of 360 is 0. And also we shall get the arc cos of 0. Arc cos of 0, th those are the angles on the vertical. So we have 90 and then 300 and what? I mean 270. So based on this domain here from 0 to 180, so here we shall pick a 0. We shall pick a 180, and here we shall pick a 90. <clears throat> so those will be our solutions. Theta will be equal to 0, pi over 2, and then pi. And then the next question, they say, hence verify that the only solutions of the equation cos theta plus sine theta is equal to 1 for this interval 0 to pi are 0 and pi over 2. So you just pick from these, and then you substitute here. So if theta is 0, I put cos of 0 is 1, then plus sine of 0 is 0. So when I add, I get 1. So that means this one is verified. When you put, it has to be giving us this one. So that one is okay for theta is equal to 0. Then we can also use theta is equal to 90. So cos of 90 is 0, then plus sine of 90, you also get, uh, that one gives you 1. So 0 plus 1, you get a 1. So those two are verified. Okay, and then let's check this one, the 180. Cos of 180 is a negative 1, but sine of 180 is a 0. So negative 1 plus 0, that one gives a negative 1. So it doesn't satisfy this equation. So therefore, 0 and pi are the solutions to this kind of question. Then next, they prove the identity sine theta over cos theta plus sine theta, then plus 1 minus cos theta out of cos theta minus sine theta gives us cos theta plus sine theta minus 1 out of 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So I'll begin with the with the left side, but you can also begin with the right side if you want. So beginning with the left side, these are fractions. So how do we solve fractions? We get the LCM. So here to get my LCM, I will just multiply the denominators. And then I get this one, and then I multiply it with this sine theta. And then I get what is here, I multiply it up here. So we shall have uh, sine, okay, sine theta multiplying with cos theta minus sine theta, and then cos theta plus sine theta multiplying with 1 minus uh, cos theta. So now we open brackets, and of course down here, this is like a difference of two squares, okay? But you can open still the same way, but we know that a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b, a minus b. So it's like a plus b, a minus b. So we shall have cos squared theta minus sine squared theta down here. And then, so here you get sine theta cos theta, then sine theta times sine theta, that is minus sine squared theta, 
and then a 1 times whatever is here so we get cos theta plus sine theta and then a minus cos theta times a cos theta you get a minus cos squared theta and then a minus cos theta times a sine theta that's a minus sine theta cos theta so you can see that this part here cancels with this one because this one's positive this one is negative and then uh, so we shall be left with our cos theta plus sine theta then minus you can see that here we have minus sine squared theta minus cos squared theta so if i factorize out that negative one that means here i will have sine squared theta plus cos squared theta but we know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is always one so we can replace this with a one and then when you look at what they told us to prove down here we don't have any cos squared so we can uh we can we can change this cos squared theta and then we express it in terms of sine squared theta so cos squared theta is the same as one minus uh, sine squared theta so minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta that gives you minus two sine squared theta and our question comes out then the next part they say using the results in a roman 2 the results that we got we saw i think the solutions for cos theta plus sine theta being 0 and 90 then and um, b here for the proving sort of this equation so we know that the whole of this is this one we have proved so we just substitute it there we just put it there and then we equate to this right side which they have given us okay and you realize that this cos theta plus sine theta minus one which is here is the same as the one this side so dividing through by that that one cancels and then we remain with one over one minus two sine squared theta which is equal to two when we cross multiply i can bring the two here because we have to make theta the subject of the formula so i can bring the two here and then i take the whole of this denominator up here so we have a half which is equal to one minus two sine squared theta now this one is a negative i can bring it this side it becomes a positive and then i say one then this a half will come this way so one minus a half then you get this a half then now you can divide through by two and you have sine squared theta is equal to a quarter and then of course i need sine theta so i will take the square root on both sides that means i will get plus or minus a half don't just write a half because whenever you take a square root you have to consider the positive and the minus so that means theta is going to be the arc sine of a half which is 30 it gives you 30 and we know that uh, sine is positive in the first quadrant and the second quadrant so in the second quadrant having got the angle the acute angle now to come up to here we subtract from 180 so if you get pi minus the pi over 6 then you get this 5 pi over 6 and then we are saying uh, we also have this other one here theta is equal to the arc sine of negative a half so you can always ignore the negative okay you can ignore the negative and arc sine of a half is of course 30 but now you go to the quadrants where sine is negative so sine is negative here in the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant so we can put the 30 here so it will be 180 plus that 30 so that is the pi plus pi over 6 and also you come here you put that 30 here so you will move from here then you go and clockwise like this up to here so which will be 360 minus that theta or 30 but these ones we don't need them because based on the interval given here the domain we have here the angles beyond 180 uh, don't fall into this domain so we just need these two pi over 6 and 150 these would be the solutions but they said somewhere that using the results of a roman 2 that means the results of a roman 2 which we got were 0 and 90 degrees i think yes 0 and 90 degrees so we also have to include them in this solution here we have to include them in this solution here because uh, in the solution here you see that there is cos theta plus sine theta you see this this part here cos theta plus sine theta and yet we got the solutions uh, we got 0 and pi over 2 that satisfied that equation of 
cos theta plus sine theta being equal to 1. So we had to include those two answers also. Otherwise, the answers would have remained only these two, 30 and 150. But you also add on the other two. Next, number 8, they give us that graph. They said the, di the diagram shows the graph of y is equal to f of x, where the function f is defined by, so f of x is 3 plus 2 sine x over 4. So there were some transformations which were made on the sine curve. Okay, so this x over 4, that is a stretch, by factor 4 parallel to x-axis, and then this 2 multiplied in the sine, that one has to be a stretch by factor 2 parallel to y-axis, and then they add a 3 to the y-coordinates, so that has to be a translation by vector 0, 3. Now, on the diagram above, they say sketch the graph of y is equal to f, the inverse of the function. So we always sketch the inverse. The inverse of any function is always a mirror image of the function in the line y is equal to x. So you know that when we are finding, uh, when we are finding the inverse of a function, we interchange x and y. So because of that interchanging, that means that when you draw these two graphs on the same grid, you will see that they are mirror images. Okay, You find that one is a reflection of the other in the line y is equal to x. So here they helped us and they put here pi over 2. So x-axis was in terms of pi, but then even the y-axis was in terms of pi. So you needed to draw first this line y is equal to x. Okay, pi over 2, pi over 2, pi, pi, like that. Then you reflect this which is given in that line. So when you reflect that, that means you have drawn the sketch of y is equal to the inverse of x. So find an expression for, that's part b, find an expression for f inverse of x. So what do we do? Uh, if we let the inverse to be y, Taking the f this side, it now becomes x is equal to f of y. So where there is x in here, I replace it with a y. Do you see that interchanging? Mm -hmm. So we have x is equal to 3 plus 2 sine y over 4. And what we are left with is to make y the subject of the formula. So we can first take this 3 here. It becomes, it becomes x minus 3. Then you divide by this 2. Then you remain this way with uh, sine of y over 4. Take away the sign from this side, it comes this way as an arc sign. So we shall have arc sign of x minus 3 over 2, which is equal to y over 4. And then after that, I need y, so I multiply all through by 4. So the inverse of that function is therefore 4 sine inverse of x minus 3 over 2. Then c. They are saying that the above diagram shows part of the graph of the function g of x, which is equal to 3, plus 2 sine, the same thing that we had the other side, plus 2 sine x over 4. For this interval, negative 2 pi or negative 360, then to 2 pi. Complete the sketch of the graph of g of x on the diagram above, and hence explain whether the, whether the function has an inverse. So, now when you look at this one here, um, for this part, so it's just a matter of finding the values of g of x when you put these x values. So put pi over 2 into your, um, into our, so the, the um, angles are given in radians in terms of pi, so my calculator should be in terms of pi. So six, and then this is part four. So we have um, three plus two sine of, uh, now we have a quarter. So this is a quarter, I can say one over four. And then times, so the angle now we can put like negative pi over 2. We can just put another one there and then I say negative and shift then pi then over 2. 
So something like that, and then I press equals. So it is 2.23, yes, then I can come back and uh, let me begin with these ones of fractions. So three pi, three pi over two. So suppose I put negative three pi over two, that one will give me 1.15. Mm -hmm. Then if we put two pi, okay, so times two, it's a negative, negative, sorry, it's negative two uh, pi. So that one gives us one, and then negative pi, that one gives us uh, 1.59. So if you try to locate where these values are here, so pi over two, if we just put pi over two, just to show you how I got where they lie. Pi, then divide by 2. Uh, that is 1.57. This is 1.57. So if I have 1.59, okay, that means uh, this one is just slightly above it. Okay, just above it. And um, mm -hmm. then you have pi. Pi is 3 dot, I think, 1, 4, 2. 3.14 so we don't have any figure which which is there so you, you you try to estimate where the values uh, lie and then you continue and you draw it so it comes like that and then they say that um, hence explain whether the graph has an inverse a graph can only have an inverse if it is one to one if it is one to one like if I have an x coordinate here, it should give us only one coordinate. Okay? So if we had something like this, if this graph was coming like that, was moving like that, okay? And uh, you have an x coordinate, <coughs> sorry, there's an x coordinate giving to that y coordinate, okay? And then there is also another x coordinate here that can give to y coordinate. Now that one is not one to one. So this one has no inverse. But when you look at this, it is a one to one. What was given here is one to one. So therefore it has an inverse. Why am I saying that it is one to one? So I'm seeing each x coordinate is giving to one y value, one y value, one y value, one y value for each x coordinate. So this one has an inverse because it is one to one. So just say it is one to one. It's not many to one. It's not one to many. So it has an inverse because it is one to one. Then next they say describe fully a sequence of three transformations which can be combined to form the graph of y is equal to sine x4. Uh, this interval 0 to pi over 2 to the graph of y is equal to f of x making clear order in which the transformations are applied so um, a graph of f of x and a graph of f of x uh, it was given as this so what was done we are beginning with our sine x so you begin by dividing x by 4 so that means this is a stretch by factor 4. If you can check, I have what we call chapter summaries. So there is summary here. If something is multiplying with the x here, that is a stretch of this graph y is equal to f of x by the factor 1 over a. So ax. And here we are having uh, a quarter x. <clears throat> so if it is a quarter x, then the stretch factor is going to be 1 over a quarter so one over a quarter will give you four so this is a stretch by factor four in x direction or you can say parallel to x axis then after that they multiply it by two okay they can mot they multiply by a two before you bring the three added on so you multiply by a two and when you multiply the function when you get a scalar and you multiply with the function that is a stretch by factor 
that which you have multiplied in so the factor a then parallel to y axis so our factor of multiplication here is a 2 so this one is going to be stretched by factor 2 in the y direction and then after we are going to add a 3 so when we put 3 plus it's the same as leaving this one here uh, and then you add it this other end whether you add it first here or at the end it's all the same so therefore this is a translation anything to do with addition or subtraction is a translation anything to do with multiplication or division that is a stretch and anything to do with change of sign that is a reflection but for this case we don't have any reflection here okay so this is a translation by vector 0 3 so we put 0 here because there is nothing which was added on x they didn't say that maybe x maybe plus 3 or plus 2 or minus anything so there is nothing that was done on the x coordinates so we have translation by vector 0 3 and that is it for this question number nine the second term of a gp is 16 and the sum to infinity is 100 find the two possible values of the first term so the second term of a gp is given by ar okay ar is equal to 16 that means i can write r as 16 over a i express r in terms of a and then the sum to infinity of a gp is given by a over 1 minus r so which is equal to 100 so where there is r i put 16 over a taking the lcm this will be down here we shall have a minus 16 over a but that a will go up to somersault and then it will find this a up here so they will multiply and then you have a squared out of a minus 16 which is equal to 100 then you can cross multiply so this a will multiply with this 100 so you get 100 a then 16 with 100 you get 1600 so bring everything onto one side you form a quadratic equation and that quadratic equation you remember we said you just put equations 5 and then 3 so we are having the coefficient of x squared is a 1 the coefficient of x is negative 100 and the coefficient, I mean the, the constant term is 1600. So it gives us 8 and negative 20. So factorized, you bring the 8 back and the 20. So you just write these answers after putting the calculator. Then you try to put them backwards like this. Then you form the factors here. You see that? So A is 20 or 8. And then the next part, they say, show that the nth term of one of the two possible geometric progressions is equal to 4 power n minus 2 multiplied by the nth term of the other geometric progression. So for one, one geometric progression, its first term is 20. Okay, So if a is 20, then its nth term, you know, nth term of a GP is a r power n minus 1 so our a is 20 and remember our r we saw it as 16 over a so 16 out of 20 then n minus that power n minus 1 and then uh, by 4 you get a 4 by 4 5 so simplified is like that and then when a is 80 that means its nth term is going to be 80 then into um 16 over 80 eh? remember it is r is 16 over a so 16 goes into 8 or 5 times so we have something like this now we divide these two so if i get the nth term one this first one here and then i divide by the second one here now of course this 20 will go here four times so that's a quarter and then these two they are all to the power of n minus one that means i can Put all of them in one bracket and then I put uh, it's like saying if you have a power 2 and then you also have B power 2 so this is the same as saying put these two together a B and then you put power 2 here so 4 over 5 divided by this they are all to the power of n minus 1 so simplifying 4 over 5 divide by 1 over 5 because uh, the 5 will go up so this one cancels then you remain with the 4 inside there so it is that 4 which is now to the power of n minus 1 and now this 1 over 4 is the same as 4 power negative 1 
okay now times this 4 power n minus 1 so when indices multiply you know you have bases same bases multiplied we add the powers okay so negative 1 plus n minus 1 so you get n minus 2 okay so that means nth term 1 is equal to this then times nth term 2 you see like I cross multiply because the whole of this is 4 n minus 2 so nth term 1 where a is 20 is equal to 4 power n minus 2 times nth term 2 where a is 80 remember that this is what they told us that um, show that the nth term of one of the two possible geometric progressions is equal to 4 power n minus 2 multiplied by the nth term of the other you see so you could even say maybe the nth term of this one is y maybe the other one is k like that so that's what we have next number 10 they said the equation of the circle x minus 8 bracket squared plus y minus 3 squared is equal to 20 the line y is equal to a half of x plus 6 is a tangent to the circle at the point p show that one possible value of a is 4 and find the other possible value so if this is a tangent to the circle this means these two are intersecting so for intersection i'm going to sort of these two simultaneously so because here i'm seeing a y i'm just going to transfer this y and put it here so we shall have a half of x then plus six minus three six minus three is just three then now i open brackets so um i will square here x squared then minus two times x times a that's minus two ax then square the a a squared and then square here you get x squared over four then plus we shall get 2 times x over 2 times the 3 which is here so 2 times x over 2 the 2 will disappear then times the 3 here you get 3x and then remember the whole of this gives us 3 so 3 squared is a 9 bring the 20 this way is equal to 0 because here we are going to get a quadratic expression we are going to get a quadratic equation now we can multiply everywhere by 4 to eliminate this denominator here so here we shall have 4x squared then here 8ax then plus 4a squared when you multiply this one by a 4 the 4 will go and you remain with x squared then times a 4 that's a 12 9 minus 20 that is negative 11 so times 4 you get negative 44 and then you put everything together in a quadratic so 4x squared plus x squared that's 5 and then the terms that are having x we are seeing this 12 and then this minus 8a so we put them together an x and then these are constants here so we know now uh, they, they told us that the line is a tangent so if it's a tangent then for tangency b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0 for any quadratic equation so our b is 12 minus 8a we square it then minus 4 times our a is 5 and then our c is 4a squared minus 44 which is equal to 0 so you open the brackets square the 12 that is 144 then 2 times 12 times 8, that's negative 192. And then square the 8, you get a 64, a squared, because it has a also. And then here you have minus 20 times 4, that is minus 80, okay? So minus 80, a squared. And then minus 20 times negative 44, you get uh, positive 880, okay? And then 64 minus 80, that's a negative 16, a squared. And then negative, uh, then you have negative 192a, then plus. So 144, when you add 880, you get 1024. Now I divide through by negative 16 just to simplify. So we get here x squared plus 12a minus 64 is equal to 0. Putting that in our calculator, uh, we are having 1. Then we are having 12, and then negative 64, which will give us a 4, and then a negative 16. And those are the two answers we have for A. Remember, they say that, show that one possible value of A is 4, and it is in there. We have seen it. And find the other possible value. So the other possible value is a negative 16. Then for A is equal to 4, find the equation of the normal to the circle. So the equation of the normal 
to the circle. We need to know that point of intersection, by the way, because it wasn't given. It wasn't given. And if you need to find the equation of any line, you must know the gradient and then the point through which it passes. So uh, we know that the equation of intersection is this one here. This is the equation of intersection. Because this one can give us the x coordinate for the intersection of the line and the curve. So our a is 4. So negative 12 minus, I think this will be 32. Okay, so you get negative 20, I think. Yes, negative 20 x. Then plus, when you put 4 here, 4 times 16, that is a 64. Minus a 44, you get 20. We can divide all through by 5. Then we get it simplified as x squared minus 4x plus 4. And then from there, this one is x minus 2 squared. So from here, we get x as 2. When we get x as 2, now we can get the y coordinate either by substituting here or here. But this one would be the easiest. So if x is 2, 2 over 2 is 1 plus 6, you get 7. So that means that coordinate p, because that's where they are meeting, is 2, 7. Now, uh, we have a tangent. The equation of the tangent is a half x plus 6. Y is equal to that. x over 2 plus 6. And uh, the tangent and the normal are perpendicular lines. So the gradient of this tangent is a half. That means gradient of the normal will be negative 1 divided by gradient of the tangent. So that will be negative 2. Remember the product of gradients of two lines which are perpendicular is always equal to negative 1. That's why you find they say m1 times m2 is equal to negative 1. So now the equation of a circle, we know it as, I mean the equation of a straight line y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1. So our y1 is this 7 and x1 is this 2. So we just substitute here and then when you open brackets here, negative 2 times x, that's negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 2, that's a 4. And then when this one crosses the equal sign, it, it becomes a positive. So that is y is equal to negative 2x plus 11. Then part c, they say 4, a is equal to 4. Find the equations of the two tangents to the circle which are parallel to the normal. Uh, now, suppose we have a tangent here. And then this is the normal. Okay? They are perpendicular. Remember, this is the normal. And then they are saying, find the equations of the two tangents to the circle, which are parallel to the normal. These are the ones. So I try to make a sketch here. This one and this one here. They are all parallel to this normal. So parallel lines, we know that they have the same gradient. That means they will have this. Uh, they will have this y is equal to negative 2x plus c. This is going to be their format. So we need to know they are c. So c has to be like to two values. You see? C has to be to two values, but we need to find that C. Now, if Y is equal to negative 2X plus C, remember we are picking it from here. This is the equation of the normal. So this must also be, this must also be the format. Like the gradient is the same. So Y is equal to negative 2X then plus C. Now we get this equation because it is intersecting. These lines are intersecting the circle then we substitute them, like we substitute this y in the equation of the circle. In other words, we solve this equation simultaneously with the equation of this circle. Remember our a is a, is a 4. So x minus 4, then plus, this was our y minus 3. So our y is minus 2x plus c, and then minus 3 squared is equal to 20. Now, we open brackets. So... This will be x squared minus 8x plus 16. Now square this, you get 4x squared. Bring the 2 times this, then times this, c minus 3. So 2 times negative 2x, we get minus 4x. Then it has to multiply with the whole of this, so I leave it in brackets as c minus 3. Then plus, then I get the whole of this, I square it. Like I'm taking this one as one entity. You get it? So I square this one, which will be c squared minus 6c plus 9. Now bring the 20 this way, it will be a minus equal to 0. Now, putting the terms together to form a quadratic, we are having x squared here and this 4x squared. So we shall have 5x squared. 
then plus um, the terms that are having x. So we have this negative 8x, but there is this negative 4x here. It will multiply with the negative 3 here. Then we shall get 12x. You see that? So 12x, then minus this 8x. It will give us a 4x. So the, here I, I wrote 4. And then there is negative 4x times a c. That means you'll have negative 4cx. So I put minus 4c, and then I put the bracket, then x. And then the rest of the constant terms, we are having this 16 uh, plus 9. That is a 25, then minus 20. That's a 5. And then here c squared minus 6c. So the whole of this is the constant term. And because these lines are tangents to this circle, for tangents, b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. So our b is 4 minus 4c squared, then minus our, uh, then 4, and then our a is a 5, and then our c is the whole of this c squared minus 6c plus 5. So we open brackets. Square the 16, I mean the 4, you get a 16, then 2 times 4 times 4 minus 4c you get minus 32c then square 4c you get 16c squared and then this is minus 20 times c that's minus 20 squared c i mean minus 20 c squared minus 20 times minus 6c so that will be 120c and then minus 20 times 5 that's minus 100 so simplified 16 minus 20 that one will give you negative 4. Okay, then negative 32 uh, plus 120, you get a positive 100, I, I mean a positive 88c. Then minus 84, 84 comes from 16 minus 100. So we can divide all through by negative 4 to simplify this quadratic. 88 divided by negative 4, you get negative 22. And then negative 84 divided by 4, you get 21. And then sort of solving this quadratic here, it will give us C, 21, and then the other value of C as 1. Remember, this one was in the format. The equations were in this format. Y is equal to negative 2X plus C. So we can put it plus 21 and then plus 1. So those will be the equations of the tangents that are parallel to the normal to that uh, circle. Lastly, number 11, the equation of a curve is y is equal to k square root of 4x plus 1 minus x plus 5, where k is a positive constant. Then it's a find y dx. So the y dx, remember square root is the same as uh, to the power of a half. So drop this a half and then reduce the power by 1. So when I get a half minus 1, I get negative a half. Okay, And then I have to multiply by the derivative of this one because it's a function which is compounded. Okay, so I use chain rule. I have to multiply by the derivative of 4x plus 1, which is a 4. Then, uh, differentiate negative x, you get negative 1. And when you differentiate a constant, you get a 0. So this 4, uh, 2 goes to a 4, 2 times. So because this power here is a negative, I can push that one down. And then we get 2k. Okay? Uh, 4 divided by 2, that's a 2. Then times the k here. So 2k out of 4x plus 1 to the power of a half, then minus 1. So that is our dy. The x, then they say find the x-coordinate of the stationary point in terms of k. You know that for stationary points, dy dx is equal to 0. So our dy dx we have gotten here is equal to 0. Then uh, you can take the negative 1, decide it becomes a positive. Then you cross multiply. That means we shall have 2k, which is equal to 4k plus 1 to the power of a half. Now you can square both sides. When I square a 2, we get 4. Then when I square k, that's k squared. So we shall get 4k squared. And then when you square here, that the square will go with the square root. Then we have 4x plus 1. So you take 1 this way, and it becomes 4k squared minus 1. Then you divide by a 4. So you can leave it here, or it can be... 4k squared divided by 4, that is k squared. And then negative 1 minus 4, that will be, I mean negative 1 divided by 4, that's negative a quarter. So that is it. So whether you leave it like this or like this, it's all fine. They are all the same. 
Next, they say given that k is equal to 10.5, find the equation of the normal to the curve at the point where the tangent to the curve makes an angle of arc turn of 2 with positive x-axis. I want to show you something small here. If this is our straight line, and it is making an angle of theta to the horizontal, okay, we can form a right angle triangle here. You know that, okay, this line is like the gradient, I mean the tangent, I'm taking it as a tangent, or any straight line, fine. Now, to get the gradient of that line, you say change in y over change in x. So here we are having a change in y, and here we are having a change in x. So that's the gradient, that is how you get it. But also, because this one is a right angle triangle, using Sokatoa, uh, relative to this angle, dy is the opposite, and dx is the adjacent. So opposite of adjacent is tan, okay? So tan theta is dy over the x. You see that? Change in y over change in x. So that means gradient of a tangent is equal to tan theta, okay? Tan of the angle it makes with the horizontal. You get it? So if theta was equal to arc tan of 2, that means tan theta is equal to 2, okay? So if tan theta is equal to 2, then that becomes the gradient of the tangent. You see that? So they gave us that, uh, they told us that at the point where the tangent to the curve makes this angle, so gradient of the tangent is 2, therefore gradient of the normal will be negative 1 over that 2, which is negative a half. And they say find the equation of the normal to that curve. Uh, we need to know the point through which the normal passes, okay? We need to know that point. In, so we need the gradient, which we have gotten here, but also the point it passes through, which we don't know. So you have your dy dx, which you got at first as 2k over 4x plus 1 power half minus 1. That is dy dx. So it is equal to 2 because dy dx is, uh, is the gradient of the tangent. And the gradient of the tangent is given here as a 2. So I equate to 2, then bring the 1 this way, it becomes a 3. Ten was, I mean k was given as 10.5, so when we multiply by 2, that is a 21. Now I can cross multiply. This one comes here, then the 3 can come down here. So that's 21 divided by 3, which is a 7. And then I can square both sides. So I square the 7, then when I also square this way, the square root will disappear. So 49, then subtract a 1, that will be 48, then divide by a 4, that will give us a 12. So if x is 12, what is y? Go back here, put your 10.5 in the place of k, and then x, we have gotten it as 12, then plus the 1, and then you get the y coordinate so the y coordinate will be uh, this 48 plus 1 that is 7 i mean uh, 49 root of 49 is a 7 okay um, so we can have 10 point 0.5 let me take this one back to the normal modes 10.5 then times 7 okay then minus negative 12 plus 5, that's minus 7, I think, yes. And then this one will give us 66.5. So the equation of the normal, remember the equation of a straight line is y minus y1, which is equal to m into x minus x1. So our x1 is this 12, and y1 is this 66.5. But the gradient of the normal is negative 1 out of gradient of the tangent. The gradient of the tangent was given as a 2, so this one would be negative 1 over 2. And then uh, we can bring this one this side. So when you open the brackets, you will have negative x over 2 plus a half of 12 is 6. So 66.5 plus 6, I think that would be 72.5, which is the same as 145 over 2. And that is uh, the equation of that normal. So this has been it for this paper, February, March 2022, uh, I mean May, June 2022. Thanks so much for watching. 
May God richly bless you.